Monica and tonight I am wanting to show you a really quick tutorial on how to attach a lobster claw clasp to some soft flex wire on this lovely necklace where I have a mix of beads from soft flex but also bbcraft.com. This is a little tiger's eye bead that I got from them. Beautiful fuchsia pink tiger's eye and that I love that color. It's bright pink. So this is a mix of beads here, and I wanted to just show you how to do that. I've got this lovely lamp work bead that I got from Inga Van Roos in a bead soup swap from Lori McDaniel Anderson and a Facebook group where we're all trying to make some jewelry and stuff. So that's what I'm doing with my bead soup is I'm trying to put everything on this necklace here. So this wire that I'm using tonight is the Softflex Tanzanite color. It's the 49 strand and I've got 10 feet in the 0 0.019 diameter. It's a 26 pound strength test so I think it's strong enough to hold my little lamp work glass bead here even though that's a big bead. So that's Tanzanite color and then I have the pink tourmaline in the same 49 strands. This is the medium wire from Softflex in the pink and the blue colors. All right, so I have everything on my bead stringing wire and I've already finished this side of it. I put a crimp, a size two crimp on this tanzanite wire and then I've got a split ring attaching to my wire. That way, if I want to change this out at some point, I can. I don't typically do that, but that's just an option. And then I'm going to put the lobster claw on the other side of this wire so that it will attach to the split ring. Now, I typically would like to put split rings onto my necklaces and bracelets as opposed to just a regular jump ring because a split ring has the keychain effect, meaning that it's a little bit more secure as far as not having that weak point where it just kind of comes apart eventually over time or with a lot of pressure. And since you're taking a necklace off and on, same thing with a bracelet, there's a lot of wear and tear there. So this is more secure in my mind in being able to have something on there that will stay secure for a long time. And then the alternative, of course, this is a rather large size, but I'm doing that because of the weight that is on my focal point here, my lovely Lampwork glass bead from Miss Inga Van Roos. So normally I would probably do like a seven, maybe an eight millimeter size of a split ring. I can't seem to find those size or else I might've even done that this time too, but this is a little bit larger. This is a 10 millimeter size. All right, so you're just gonna grab a size two crimp tube and put that onto your bead stringing wire. And then you're going to pop on your clasp. But before you do that, since I'm going to actually put this directly onto the wire, I want to be, I want to test my clasp to be sure it opens without any problem. And it is good. So I'm going to pop that on. And it doesn't really matter which way I'm doing this. However, depends on if you're a left-hander or a right-hander as far as how you, which side you want to fool with the clasping. Now, since I'm right-handed, I like to put my clasps over on the left hand side of my board typically but because in this design I have got this as a removable pendant meaning that I have it on the lobster claw clasp and it actually turns any direction that I want it to. I'm not as worried as I would be if this were stationary and not ever going to come off and or turn directions. Because this is so pretty on the back, you know, I'd be fine with someone seeing the swirly pattern on the back because look at that beautiful glass. And this is the focal, of course, the flower on the front, but either way, it's fine. And the way that I've got this uh, situated on the soft flex wire, it's going to be easy to turn just with my fingers, no matter which way this lobster clasp is. So therefore, I can go ahead and continue on. But be mindful of that when you're laying out your pattern of your design to, um, if it's a, a clasp here like this lobster claw, to put it on whichever side of the board. That way when you pick it up and turn around to put it on, the lobster claw is wherever your dominant hand is gonna be, okay? Put this on the wire, feed it through your crimp tube. Now I like to use the tubes as opposed to the beads because the crimp tubes are cylindrical and the crimp beads are really kind of cut off and rounded. 
So with the crimp beads, you don't have as much strength in holding the length of wire as you do the longer tube here, the crimp tube. So I just prefer using these crimp tubes and I usually always will use these size twos. If you have a lot of wire or a multi-strand project, you might use the size three or four. And anytime that you need to figure out what size crimps that you can use or crimp beads, you can always look on your beading wire. It usually will tell you like this is the number two, this is a number one for crimp bead, crimp tube, you can see the difference there. Okay, so I have my little lobster claw on. Now, where I've kind of got myself in a little bit of a pickle is that the wire might not fit through my seed beads that I have on the end without me having to kind of fight them a little bit. So you wanna also be mindful of that because if you're gonna do like I am, I'm just gonna hide my tail into the last uh, bit of beadwork here on the end of the piece and then pull the tail through so that I can take out the slack. Some of my beads might not be cooperative in this. <laughs> and if that's the case, then I'm gonna have to do a little bit more finagling and maybe cut my tail off. A variety of seed beads, it's not always the same level of quality. So your holes and the size and the dimensions and things don't always stay the same from bead to bead. If you use the Miyumi or Toho seed beads, you don't really have that problem. Okay, so this is a lot, um, I've got what, four? I think I'm just gonna do this. So I've got them through four, at least four beads, which is gonna give me enough strength. And then I'm gonna just pull this down to try to take out the slack now that I've got some of my beads on here. I need to pull a little bit more. I want to leave a little bit of a gap. That way when I go to crimp this tube, it doesn't cause an issue with no space. That's good right there. It's gonna leave just a teeny tiny little bit of space once I do the crimping, but because this lobster claw clasp has a nice thick loop, it's gonna eat up most of that anyway, so I'm not really concerned about it. I'm gonna pull just once more slightly. I'm going to kind of pull this up just a hair and I want to be sure that my wire is not going to be crossed when I go to crimp. So if you can see the lines are parallel within that tube, that's exactly what I want. Nothing is crossed over. I don't know if you can see that. I'm in the back portion of my crimping plier and I'm going to just give it a squeeze. That made a nice U shape. Then I'm gonna come over the top of that U-shape and I'm gonna give it a squeeze in the front of my plier like that. And this is a 49 strand wire, so I had to give it just an extra little oomph. And I'm gonna come over here with my bent nose pliers and give it another little squeeze. So my loop is just a little bit larger than I normally like to have it, but that's still okay. But you see how the crimp is sandwiched? It's like closed together. I call that closing the sandwich. So now that is together. It's very strong. My wires didn't cross. Everything's good. But I don't want this tail to be sticking out like that. So that's where I'm going to come in with my flush cutter and just go right up against the bead that that's coming out of. Cut that off. And then I can wiggle that back in there to be hidden. That way it's not gonna scratch anybody. Now I have all my beads lined up and I mean, it's really not that big a difference in the loops. If you notice from this side to this side, it's just a little bit bigger on this side, but that's okay because this is also a lot wider of a loop here on my component on my little lobster clasp. So now I want to take some crimp covers and just cover these crimp tubes up. There's different sizes too of crimp covers. I think because I do have a um, kind of a bigger loop on one side than the other, I'm gonna go with a little bit larger of a crimp cover. So 
you just lay your crimp tube that's been crimped down into the crimp cover and it's just going to cradle it and I like to do it with what I call the sandwich side up and then you're going to take I take a bent nose plier and go on either side of it and this is a lot bigger than I typically would use but I'm doing that because when I close this it's going to kind of take up some of that space. Now, when I close my crimp covers, I'm not trying to flatten this. I'm just trying to close it to where you don't see the crimp anymore and you don't see any of the exposed wire. And it just ultimately looks like a rounded bead. So I'm just coming on top of that because it likes to kind of pooch up. And give it another squeeze on top. Again, I'm not, I'm not flattening. I'm just going on that lip of the bead because this you don't want this to be grabbing a hold of your shirt sleeve and all that stuff. Or in this case, since it's a necklace, your um, like your collars. See how that took up the difference of the loop, but I still have plenty of wiggle room on my lobster claw clasp area. And now I'm going to move over here to this other side and put one on here. Same process. The necklace is all finished up and it looks more professional in the finishing because of these crimp covers in my opinion rather than leaving the crimp tubes that are crimped exposed. Here's my little necklace. When I wear this I want to have my little roses facing front ways as well as my pendant. So the way that I have my lobster claw is such that the lobster claw is on the right hand side. I take this part, put it on myself, and then I can adjust these little rose beads to make sure that they're facing the, the right direction and make sure that my pendant is facing outward so everybody can see it. And so that's how you put your clasps on. Now you do that the same as you would with a toggle clasp or a magnetic clasp. The biggest one that you need to worry about is the lobster claw as far as which hand that you want to be dealing with the mechanism. And my lamp work charm here is also on a lobster clasp. I just made this to where I could take this off and put it onto another design if I wanted to. So I'm not relegated to having this beautiful lamp work glass bead on just this necklace. I can remove it and put it on anything that I want and then still bring it right back to this necklace if I want to. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to put a lobster claw clasp onto your necklace and use crimp covers. So that is today's beading tutorial. For, and I've got these cool floral earrings to match the floral vibe here. So awesome. I love it. Check out my friends at bbcraft.com for these lovely components here, these chandelier components. I've got a huge selection and I have shown them in the beading haul that I did for bbcraft.com. Again, I am a part of the bbcraft YouTube program. So if you have more than 100 subscribers on your YouTube channel and you're interested in any kind of crafting supplies, check out bbcraft.com link that I will have below in my description and go apply to become a, a member with them for the YouTube program. Then you'll be able to get some cool components and beads and uh, other crafting supplies too, and can make your own videos. They require that you do a haul video and two tutorials. Leave me a thumbs up if you like this video and a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for me. I love to hear from you. Share this to any of your jewelry making friends that might enjoy this. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already done so and have a spark Fantastic day, y'all. Bye.